Hey guys, Toby here from Hadler Fitness. Hope everyone's having a good day and crushing it at always. So today we're gonna to be covering off on diet breaks. I'm gonna give a quick insight to my 10 day mini cut in five days in. Just gonna do a quick physique update. All right, let's get it. If you ain't know me when the struggle happens, just remember we So you'll notice with the 10 day mini cut that um, I've dropped from about 100 kilos down to 98. A lot of that's water weight because I've cut my carbs out. I've cut probably about 20% of my carbohydrates. So I'm eating a little bit below maintenance calories. So basically I'm just doing intermittent fasting. So I'm skipping that breakfast meal. So I'm skipping anywhere from 500 to 1000 calories. It's quite a, uh, aggressive, but overall it's only for 10 days. So I'm not gonna lose much. I'm not gonna lose any muscle really at all. I'm basically just losing a lot of water weight and probably a lot of glycogen energy. So basically when you cut out carbohydrates, because for every gram of carbohydrates you store three grams of water. That's why if you eat a lot of carbs in one day, you might balloon out and you're like, you look like you've gained 10 kilos, but that's basically just the water weight retained in your muscles, which is energy. Though I am getting a lot leaner. I'm basically retaining a, like most of my muscle mass and there may be a slight little bit of fat loss but overall my, my weight will probably drop anywhere from two to four kilos so overall in the press i'm going to look a lot leaner and a lot better than what i did when i was well and truly into my bulk so it's just a way to um stay relatively lean and gain muscle so obviously like so like i said earlier the same as when you're eating in a deficit you go down have a break so I was in a bulk, I was going up, now I'm bringing it back down, just to lose a little bit of that weight, stay lean, and to actually see how much muscle I've gained with my um, before and after photos, which I'll tag here. Which is, I'm really happy with, Of my most of my lifts have gone up about 10%, and I've gained a lot of muscle, especially in uh, my shoulders. I've kind of got like a good V taper going, my traps have built up, and yeah, overall I'm quite happy with it. If, if you guys wanna learn more, just comment down below, subscribe, PM me, you know the drill. We're talking about diet breaks. So what I would like to introduce to you today is a really good study. The I'll just start off with, the study failed miserably, but during the study, they uh, discovered something really cool and extraordinary. All right, so the study was to study people ideally obese people while they fall off the bandwagon when they're, um, when they're told to go on a diet break. All right, so they did four to six weeks roughly of calorie deficit, and then they dropped down a little bit of body fat, body weight, whatever you wanna call it, and then they were told to go on a diet break. And then in two weeks after that diet break, what they meant by the diet break was eating back at calorie maintenance, and then hopping back on a calorie deficit after that two week break. And what they expected, like the hypothesis behind the actual idea of the study was that they were just gonna balloon and gain even more weight than what they were at the start of the study because that's generally what happens with people on a diet, they go into calorie deficit, they'll lose a lot of weight, then they get to a weight they're happy with. They're looking at the short term, not the long term, and then they go back to their old eating habits. They don't change their habits. So basically, the people went on a diet break and then happily went back on the calorie deficit and lost even more weight. Even though they ate back at maintenance, they regained a little bit of weight, but it just shows weight loss isn't linear. So you have four weeks on, two weeks off, and then another four weeks on. So you'll lose a bit of weight, you'll gain a little bit of weight, but it won't be starting weight. It'll be like down, up about here, and then back down. And through this, just the psychological point of okay, I have to do this for four weeks and then I'm having a two week break and then I'm going back onto the cutting phase of the diet or calorie deficit. So what it shows psychologically, 
weight loss is mainly a mental thing. Like, you have to exercise, you have to eat the right food, but it really shows that it's all in your head. So, given the results and the people gained a little bit of weight, then they were happy and they went back onto the diet. And I think about 70 to 80% of the subjects that were in the study are still maintaining their current um, weight loss and they're happy. So now my perspective of diet breaks. So when you go onto a diet, when you go from eating whatever you're eating and then you go, you go onto a diet, you're like, all right, I'm going to cut down now. You basically put your body into shock. You're starving your body of food that it's not used to. So that in itself is going to be very taxing on your body. And if you're like, yeah, I'm going to be cutting for like the next 12 weeks, that psychologically is so hard to comprehend, especially if you're overweight and you've never done it before, if it's the first time you're dieting. So just think about that. If you have a four-week block, you're like, I'm going to go on a slight calorie deficit. I can still eat roughly the same amount of food. It's only going to be a little bit less. And then after four weeks, I'm going to jump back up, but I'm not going to regain all my weight because obviously from an evidence-based point of view, this has been proven time and time again. Obviously, there are some people that just are complete failures at it, but then like majority of the people like make this happen and they focus on the long term, not the short term. Long if you're looking for short term weight loss, that's okay, but you need to have a long term goal. I'm talking like at least six months to a year because you need to change your habits. If you're not changing your habits, then you're just setting yourself up for failure. Because weight loss isn't temporary. Like you you're here for a long time, not a short time. So you need to change your lifestyle habits, whether that be exercising, eating healthy, but you can still enjoy your lifestyle you want with flexible dieting. I'll follow the 80-20 principle, basically. I eat healthy and exercise 80% of the time, and then the 20% of the time, which is roughly the weekends, I'll enjoy myself, have a few drinks, go out with friends, go out, eat dinner. It's not all about eating chicken, broccoli, and rice, and just grinding, 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 man. Life's not about that. Life's about having fun and enjoying it. Diet and fitness are just a supplement to having an awesome lifestyle. I don't let these two rule my lifestyle. My lifestyle rules them too. So I work that into that. That's what I do with my clients and my fitness program. So basically, I'm going to fit a program to your lifestyle. You can get epic results working out three times a week and following different uh, eating protocols that's going to get you to your desired goal, whether that be any calorie deficit following intermittent fast into a ketogenic diet or anything along the lines of that. There's so much information out there that can help you get to where you want to be. You just have to imply it. You just need the right person to show you the way. That's that's what I'm trying to do with my clients and they're, they're getting really good results. And it's, to be, to be honest, it's awesome. It's so fucking good seeing people achieve things. And just with utter ease, just going from three three to four hours of exercise a week and just understanding basic nutrition and understanding that meal timings aren't everything. You don't have to eat six meals a day. You just have to understand what you're putting in your mouth in regards to energy consumption of each meal. And you're like, you can fit that into your maintenance calories and you're not going to gain weight. And if you know you're exercising, lifting weights and doing a little bit of cardio, you're building muscle in the same process. And if you're following a three-day split of full body programs, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you're going to get epic results because you're going to have elevated muscle protein synthesis for at least 48 hours between those two workouts. So you're still going to be burning calories during that time in a process called um, EPOC, excessive post uh, oxygen con consumption, which is after exercise. Even, and you're going to have elevated metabolic rate. So, and you're going to be feeding your body the right stuff and still enjoying the life you want to live. So with diet breaks, you need to understand they are a must. They are mandatory if you want to achieve your goals because you can't be eating a calorie deficit all the time because you're basically starving your body and your body's metabolic rate is going to slow down. Your hormones are going to slow down as well and they're going to adjust to that starvation period, which is why people, when they do uh, dieting, they eat a calorie deficit, they hit a plateau. They hit a plateau and they're like, oh, I'm exercising more, I'm still eating really low calorie diet and I'm not losing any weight. The idea is to bump your calories back up return your hormone profile back to normal, your glycogen stores, your leptin levels, your ghrelin levels, basically that whole hormonal um, circle needs to be readjusted, your body and metabolism needs to return to a rough estimate of normal that maintenance calories or even, even eating in a slight surplus. The idea is that you're not going to go back to the point of where you started from. You may get close, but the idea is that 
you're having a break, a psychological break. When I say actual break, that's in context. That's not going out and binge eating. That's still being slightly refrained in what you're doing and having like a little bit of, that's ha being strict with your diet, still roughly, but still enjoying life and understanding it that you need a break. Not You can't just grind 24 seven. Life isn't about the grind. You still need to enjoy things. There's no point getting down to a lean, cut, chiseled like physique and being like, this was absolutely miserable. I never want to do this again. So you can you can get there a little bit slower, but you can do it so enjoyable. And once you understand nutrition and fitness, just the core basics, man, life is so easy. I'm not, I'm not lying to you when I say it is. Like I'm a living example of it. And if you want to learn more, just comment, subscribe, and PM me if you want, like my Facebook and everything's tagged in this blog post. So yeah, just, like guys, you really just have to watch some of my videos and learn a lot of the information out there, which about flexible dieting and understanding nutrition and what you don't have to do and what you can do and making things so easy. So once you understand that and understanding that you need diet breaks when you're eating in a calorie deficit is mandatory. So the same thing goes when you're eating in a calorie surplus as well. So if you're bulking, you still need to have a break from bulking because it Obviously, bulking is you're eating in a calorie surplus. You're going to make yourself feel sick on a general occasion if you're eating anywhere from 500,000 calories over your maintenance. I've been bulking for the last three to four months, and I'm just going on to a 10-day mini cut, which I showed the picture earlier. Oh, sorry, the video earlier. That was five days into my mini cut. Um, it's kind of like a lean bulk. I've been eating a little bit above my maintenance calories, but primarily it's been nearly at least a thousand calories well over my maintenance. So that's a lot of food I'm consuming anywhere from three and a half to five thousand calories a day, depending on how hard I'm training and whether it's a refeed day or not. So yeah, like either, either way, whether it's up or down, whether you're bulking or cutting, like it, you still need to have breaks. You still need to let your body just flatten out and psychologically recover from the goal and reset and basically just have a break and enjoy life. So the whole idea is just to have a break, enjoy life and not get stressed over the little things because overall you're looking at it long term, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not, it may happen short term, but it's not going to happen overnight. It's a process. You need to enjoy the process because if you're not enjoying the process, you're not enjoying life. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Like, subscribe, comment.